Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about power creep in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you guys are unfamiliar with the term power creep, the most commonly accepted definition is essentially the gradual unbalancing of a game due to successive releases of new content. So what does that mean? Essentially, all the new better stuff is outweighing the old irrelevant stuff. And as the game progresses and new content comes out, better and better items tend to get put in the game and then all the other sets are left on the back burner. But what is also left on the back burner is the very fundamentals on which the game is written. This video is not going to be a PvP rant, this applies to PvE as well, but we need to talk about the fundamentals of ESO as a whole. So let's take a look at the Magbar for example. Why is this class doing so, so well in this sort of meta? It's not just the Magbar, it's any class that can stack a really, really high damage without having to worry about sustain or survivability all too much. Magbar does this really well, the Dragonites do it really well, even Stand Blades to a point do it really well with Cloak because you don't have to worry about your survivability. So why is that? So your spell and weapon damage. What does your spell and weapon damage do, fellas? Spell damage increases the damage of your spells. Go figure, right? But what does it also do? It increases the healing of said spells, the effectiveness of your healing. So right now, the meta has shifted and people have figured this out. I've been reluctant to really comment on this because me in the back of my head, I honestly do not want to go against this glass cannon heavy meta. Unfortunately, we are creeping toward that end and I'm really hoping the success of patches after this patch does not coincide with the current meta. So. The way everything has shifted is that everyone, literally everyone, especially Magicka builds, right? Magicka builds can get away with this probably the best. Stand builds to a point, but Magicka builds, the Templar in particular, we're going to be using that as a reference because it is the most obviously seen, okay? The only thing you have to do on a Magbar right now is stack everything into spell damage. So why can this class get away with that? It's the way the class functions, it's the identity of the class. The best offense is a good defense, the very similar way to the Magicka Dragonite and how it functions. So by stacking 10,000 spell damage on your Magplar, you are outputting the most damage you possibly can of pretty much any class in the entire game. But what are you also doing? You're also healing for about that amount of damage done. You have access to an AoE cleave essentially that does a metric shitload of damage and also heals you in the process. Not does it also heal you in the process, but just having a high weapon and spell damage also increases your healing effectiveness across the board. And therein lies the problem. We'll recircle back to this. So my point number two. So a couple patches ago, maybe not the last patch, Azos did revert all of the proc sets to where now they can crit, but they did do a blanket nerf at which they nerfed all the damage by approximately 50%. So it kind of balances out in a way. So why is this even a problem? Well, well your proc sets scale off of your weapon and spell damage. You guys see the trend I'm getting on, right? The weapon and spell damage stat on your character sheet is way, way too heavily weighted. There is essentially no reason for you to ever stack into Magicka or Stamina. No, Stamina obviously you need dodge rolls and break freeze, you know, whatever. But when it comes to like the Magicka classes in particular, there is zero reason to spec into any sort of maximum Magicka build. It's just that spell damage is better no matter what you do. So therein lies the problem. So now, certain classes can stack literally every single point that they have into spell damage and they essentially become an un unkillable freight train, right? What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? That's kind of the way the classes are shaping out to be and this is going to be true for not just Magicka classes guys. Stamina classes can do this just as well if not better because they have way more sources to increase their weapon damage far beyond what we ever could on a Magicka build. So having your Max and Magicka as essentially a wasted resource pool, that's where the flaws happen. Now the only thing that scales from your Max and Magicka is the shields of the Magicka Sorcerer. Guys, why is Magicka Sorcerer in such a bad place right now? Because there is literally no reason for you to spec into Max Mag because it's not going to help your healing nearly as much and it's not going to increase the damage of your proc sets or your ultimates. So essentially you have zero reason to spec into Max of Magicka unless you want to increase your ward size. That's why Magsork right now is a bottom tier trash in PvP. I'm not saying that this is true for PvE as well, but from my observations on the PvP, there's very, very few Sorks out there unless you are a pet Sork spamming your bird heals. 
So the next question kind of arises, what do you do about this? Um, where's it going to go in the next couple of patches? What if there are more sets, more class balances, more passive changes that a lot for even more spell and weapon damage? Well, this is something the devs are really going to take a look at here in the next year or two. If the game even survives that long, let's be honest. Hopefully Microsoft buying Bethesda and all these other companies will have a positive impact on the Elder Scrolls. I believe it will because let's take, for example, Dungeons and Dragons. You have a 20 sided dice, right? So if you roll the dice, it lands on a four, okay? That's the state I feel the Elder Scrolls Online in with the dev team, with the leadership thereof. I feel like we rolled a four with them. So Microsoft comes along, you get a chance to make the decision, hey, do I want to roll this 20 sided dice and see if I can get better than a four? Of course, everyone's going to take the dice and roll it again. So the odds of Microsoft actually making the game worse is going to be very, very, very low compared to when they're actually going to make it better. So hopefully we do see some positive changes out coming from them. But someone has to understand this power creep trend. It's only going to get worse unless it's talked about, unless it's designed around. So there's two possible ways you can go about this. There's a brute force method at which you can literally go through and fine tune every single passive weapon skill. In the entire game to suit your fundamental code of everything stacking off your spell damage or you can change spell damage the stat name is spell damage and weapon damage to not increase the effectiveness of your healing which is kind of nutty if you think about it the stat is called weapon and spell damage but it's also increasing your healing that's crazy what they need to do they need to make a decision to segregate your damage from your healing your healing needs to scale from your stat pools and your damage needs to scale from well spell and weapon damage it will throw a lot of builds out of whack it will completely shake up all metas across the board but i honestly believe guys that the fundamentals of eso is just essentially flawed right now due to power creep introducing these new sets changing all the classes around with the new passives. It's not bad yet, but I do predict it's going to be in the next couple patches or so. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Am I just being stupid? Am I thinking really too far into this? I have played a lot of MMOs in my day, guys. I know what power creep is, especially in World of Warcraft. And I'm recognizing it here, not in the Elder Scrolls Online. If something's not done about the fundamentals, the way the damage and healing stacks and ESO, it's going to get out of whack really, really quick. And a huge shout out to my patrons and also my community members who allow me to do this full time. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. If you want to help support the channel, the best way to do so is with a like and sub. But again, I do have YouTube memberships as well as the Patreon tiers if you want to go a little bit further and help me out. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.